Hi all, in this tutorial, I will show you how to plot the power spectrum of an oscillator using PSS analysis. I will also show you how to plot the harmonic frequency and also the tuning sensitivity of the oscillator. So I am using the same uh, setup which I was using earlier for the transient simulation uh, of the oscillator. Now uh, let's go to the maestro view here. So the first of all, uh, I will go here and select the analysis which I am going to use here. So click to add analysis. Uh, I am going to use the PSS analysis uh, to plot the power spectrum, the harmonic frequency and the tuning sensitivity of the oscillator. Uh, if you see here uh, under this uh, periodic steady state analysis, the engine here, there are two types of engines. Okay, let me go one step back. Uh, PSS is the uh, extension of the DC analysis and is used for uh, periodic circuits uh, to find the steady state of uh, a periodic circuit. It's used to find uh, the final waveforms after you know you do simulations for infinite period of time and is generally used in case of uh, VCO for example to find the steady state, steady state frequency and also to measure the steady uh, state phase offset of a uh, log PLL. Uh, just to highlight here, PSS is not as straightforward as DC analysis. If it is not properly set up, you might run into some convergence issues. Okay, now coming back to this uh, engine here. So there are two types of engines you see here, shooting and uh, harmonic balance. The harmonic balance is a frequency domain method. Uh, this uh, engine easily handles the frequency domain models. If you are using S parameter models in your uh, circuit or in your design, you should choose this harmonic balance. Uh, its accuracy is limited by the number of harmonics used. Uh, therefore, it's not suitable for uh, simulating uh, strongly nonlinear responses and uh, when it comes to the shooting so it's a time and domain method and uh, here you don't you don't need to choose the number of harmonics uh, but the time step should be you know enough uh, to simulate the maximum frequency AC response and uh, this cannot the shooting cannot handle the uh, frequency domain models like the harmonic balance so I will choose here the shooting uh, engine for the simulation of the oscillator and now uh, let's go to the next option which is the beat frequency here. If you remember from my transient analysis, uh, I had the frequency of I think around 1.3 uh, uh, megahertz, something like this. And uh, the number of harmonics here, usually I keep uh, them as much as possible higher, so typically around 30 so that uh, all my high frequency noise components they are you know integrated in my overall at the output response uh, typically for an oscillator you should always keep the accuracy conservative because it's very sensitive at the when you are mostly designing a uh, uh, oscillator that tends of uh, gigahertz frequency so they are more sensitive so we should have better accuracy here run transient i'll keep it yes uh, stop time just do small uh, maybe few nanoseconds dynamic parent i don't touch it and then there is oscillator because it's an oscillator i will enable this here uh, i will also save uh, the initial transient results here and then the oscillator node i go here select output here and then again uh, go back to and the negative is minus here and if you are using a differential ring oscillator for example an lc based oscillator or a differential amplifier based oscillator you can choose the, the other output here in subground. And then there is just another very important uh, parameter which is the calculate initial conditions IC automatically. So this option usually works for the LC oscillators. Uh, since I'm using here a ring oscillator, uh, it will not work here. So you don't need to define here. You can just simply enable this. Uh, it will save a little time at the beginning of the simulation for you. The rest I'll keep as it is and uh, I'll press OK. Now that I set up my uh, PSS analysis, so I will just simply simulate it here. So I think the simulation is over. So let me go to here now. Tools. Uh, no, I go to simulation. 
Mm -hmm. I go to results, direct plot, main form. And here you see when I click on the main form, this pop up window comes and uh, the PSS analysis is here. So, as I mentioned, that we are going to do first the uh, we are going to plot the spectral power. Okay, so I will select this and here the terminal select. So I will select this net which I use at which I want to see this power. So net specify. So by default, I, I prefer it to keep it 50 ohms. But if you want to keep it uh, some other distance, you can define it here. And the modifier dBm. And we'll have this, let's say the fundamental frequency at first harmonics. We will see the value here. And uh, add to the outputs. I would like to uh, send this to also the output so that I can next time plot it without uh, going to here. And then it is asking me select net on schematic. So I will simply go here and select this output net here. So it will plot uh, this uh, spectral power uh, of this output net at the first harmonics. And if I go to my first harmonics, you can see the exact frequency 103.08 megahertz, which I had uh, achieved when I was doing the transient analysis. And basically, my oscillator frequency is this much only. That's why it's reporting the same here. And the power is here 13.65. DBM. Okay. Now let's close this and uh, go again to the results. Uh, I think it's already open here that plot form. Yeah. So as I mentioned, now we will plot the harmonic frequency also. So I will go here and uh, the first one here, uh, and I will add to the. Uh, I'll plot it also. It's just a number here for now, but I would like to plot it also. The reason why I'm uh, showing you this harmonic frequency here is because I would like to plot the sensitivity, uh, tuning sensitivity of this uh, VCO uh, here. So for that, I need to uh, get this harmonic frequency in my uh, MISO environment. So I just uh, press close here. Now you see here I have uh, the uh, spectral power plot here, and this is just a value here, and then I have this harmonic frequency also. Okay. Now to plot the tuning uh, frequency, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sweep. I'm going to uh, tune this control voltage, let's say here, this one. Uh, I'm going to sweep it between, let's say, point. Uh, I go here and I will sweep it from, let's say, 0 0.5 till 1.8. And I will keep, let's say, 20 points here. Uh, OK. And uh, I think the rest is as it is. OK. Let's press it OK. And then I will simulate it. Now the reason I uh, I am doing this is because I would like to get the tuning sensitivity of my VCO. And this I can achieve by uh, by taking the derivative of this harmonics uh, this this function here. So mathematically, as coming back to the tuning sensitivity, uh, it's the gain of the VCO element. It's very important when you are doing the whole PLL and you need to find the gain of your VCO because it affects the dynamics and the stability of the control loop when it comes to like loop, loop bandwidth also when it comes to the uh, PLL design. In other words, I can also define uh, the tuning sensitivity as the change of the output frequency per unit change in tuning voltage. Okay, And it's measured in uh, megahertz per volt. Uh, I'm just waiting for now this simulation to finish so that we can then uh, have a look on our this tuning sensitivity as well as the other parameters like the impact of this V control voltage uh, on the tuning sensitivity as well as on the power spectral plot also and on the harmonics also. Just to highlight here also if I, if I go back to the schematic here uh, in, in my previous tutorial I just mentioned that I can vary this voltage here but uh, I can vary this control voltage also here. Let me go quickly in my uh, cell here. So basically here I can vary this VBN also. I can vary this VBP also to control the delay of this inverter cell and hence to control the oscillation of my uh, circuit or VCO. Let me go back to my store. Uh, okay, so now I have the outputs here. Uh, this is the result of a suite here. So I will just delete this because this is not useful for me here. And I will send this to the move to new window. So this is the impact of the control voltage on my uh, 
harmonic frequency you can see here then. and also uh, this is the impact of my control voltage on the power spectrum okay and now a uh, very important feature as i said that uh, you have to plot the tuning sensitivity of the oscillator or a vco and, and very important when you are doing the pls design so for that i go here maestro uh, i go here in the maestro in the output setup and on this i just right click here and send to calculator and then i take the derivative of this okay basically i'm trying to find the slope of the signal which will define the tuning sensitivity of my vco or a ring oscillator so i just plot it here so this is the tuning sensitive curve you know of my vco so you can see here uh, the impact of the voltage control on my sensitivity uh, on this uh, on my tu uh, tuning sensitivity of my pll or let's say for the vco in case of here ideally it this should be constant as possible as uh, across this whole voltage or let's say the tuning voltage which could be from 0.6 to 0.8 depending on your design the reason being uh, it's easier to tune the vco across that control voltage if it is uh, when the relation is linear between frequency and voltage so this is how you plot the tuning sensitivity of a ring oscillator and also the power spectrum plots also in the coming videos i will now go to the noise uh, to show you the impact of the noise and how to measure different uh, parameters in the p noise analysis and also how to measure the jitter extra also thank you